Hey YouTube, tonight on Tinker with Tools, we're gonna to be kind of covering a little bit of a different angle when it comes to tools. We're gonna to be talking about what I call my go bag. It is the tool tote that I use when I need to go and get a job done either around the house or at someone else's house. And so we're gonna be covering what I use this for, why I felt it necessary to have it right now, and we're gonna be talking about the tools that I put in there to be able to get the job done. So let's get into that on Tinker with Tools. Now to give some backstory, roughly three months ago, my youngest daughter ended up flooding major portions of our house. And with that, we ended up having to file an insurance claim that ended up replacing roughly 75% of the flooring in the livable spaces in our house. Now because such a large portion of the house was getting affected, we did make certain decisions to upgrade or improve flooring in other areas of the house so that it would all match and be a little bit more cohesive in this house. There was a fair amount of work we decided to undertake ourselves to help mitigate some of the costs that would have come with hiring someone to do that. Some of the demolition work and even undertaking tearing out and putting back in some of the cabinetry that I had put into the house over the last few years. Now because of that, I do have a fair amount of tasks that I need to do each and every day just to try and start to put the house back together. And so I thought it was time to establish kind of a tool bag of sorts that I could take and just move from room to room and do different chores and jobs that I had to be able to start to check some of that off. Now what I've actually chosen here is actually the Tough Built Large Tool Tote. We're gonna to talk about some of its features, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and we're gonna cover some of what I decide to put in here. And then I actually wanna get your opinion on what you would put in a solution like this and what are some of the favorite examples of the tools that we talk about today. So let's go ahead and get right into this and start talking about why I chose this Tool Tote. All right, so as I mentioned, this is actually the Tough Built Large Tool Tote. I picked mine up from Lowe's, and actually right now it's on sale for $49.99. I wanted to find something that was at a lower cost that would give me a lot of what I need. Now I considered tool totes from both Husky, Milwaukee, and a couple of different online solutions like Klein. Ultimately I settled on this both because of the cost and some of the features that it gave. So let's talk about those individual features. Now inside there are two sewn-in dividers that divide this into three sections internally and then there's pockets on either end, and alongside those dividers, there's actually little pockets that you can actually store individual tools in. I like this solution because it does allow you to put a lot of different tools in without having them all jumbled together in the middle and creating a mess that you can't get to the one tool you need or you can't see it. There's pockets all along this side, as well as each end and all along the back side that allow you to have just a lot of different storage. Now, it does only come with the hard handle up top. The strap that you see here is actually something you can add on. It's not super expensive. I believe it was like five or $6 to add on the strap. Now, one of the things that I do love is some sort of pencil like this. This one is actually from Aux, and it's called their Tough Carbon Marking Pencil. It has the pencil sharpener integrated right into the case of it. And what I really like is this can either clip onto your bag or onto your pants, and then you can just pull it out super easy and have a place for it to go that's going to protect the lead and make it nice and easy. I also then keep a Marksol or a Sharpie. Um, I actually just have this little Milwaukee light. It does have some magnets in it and stuff that allow you to hang it, a little clip along the back, but it's just a nice good light that allows you to kind of illuminate the situation if you find yourself in a place with poor lighting. Then I do have a, right now, a Lennox utility knife, uh, just kind of the retractable razor blade knife, but you could easily carry whatever knife you want on there. Now, you'll notice this clip right here. This is a clip system that would allow you to take something like their various bags that they have, and you can actually just clip that right onto there. And so when you are carrying the bag around, everything can be clipped to the bag, and then when you get to the actual job, you can take that bag off and actually put it onto the belt system that they have. And you can even buy more of those clips and you could have them on different things in your work surface, or like I said, on a tool belt so that you can just grab this bag. Now, in terms of what I have inside, I do just have a Weeha 11 and one screwdriver. It's one of a couple of different screwdrivers that I have in here, a small pair of pliers in here. I'm trying to decide what is going to be the right plier combination in here. This is just a small pair of Canipex pliers that was on KC Tool as their tool of the day a couple weeks ago. I have a pair of needle nose pliers. Find those come in handy quite a bit. Um, anytime you're doing wiring or stuff or you need to cut through wires, 
having a nice wire stripper is nice. This is also one of those tool of the days that I picked up a while back um, and it is great. I absolutely love this. I then have a smaller precision screwdriver. Sometimes I'm getting into different things and it's just nice to have a variety of small bits that you can go through. Uh, this, this from Klein is just a great little screwdriver because it stores them all right in the handle. You've got all the different bits you need and it's a good quality screwdriver. Um, something that, that is rather new to me is actually the pliers wrench. I tried them out for the first time a few months ago. This has replaced the crescent wrench for me. Um, it's just a great little option anytime you need an adjustable wrench. They adjust super fast. And even with something small like this, you can actually get quite a bit of leverage on something. And then once you clamp down on it, it's not going anywhere. If you haven't tried out these plier wrenches, they are a little pricey. I suggest maybe going with the Harbor Freight version to start out if you want. They only have the one size, but then if you move over to Knipex or some of the other brands that make these, you can get a variety of sizes. And one of these in your tool bag really does make for a very versatile tool. <clears throat> Next, I have these Crescent Wiss shop shears that allows you to cut a lot of stuff. They're not gonna produce the finest or best quality cut, but in terms of just being able to go through a variety of stuff and even some more demanding tasks, these are a great little pair of shears to have and I absolutely love them. I would recommend them to anyone. All right, and then next, as I mentioned, we've been doing some finished work and so pulling nails or cutting off nails. Uh, this little pair of Knipex nippers, these are like their carpenter nippers. And this one is actually the hammerhead design, so you could technically use this as a hammer in a pinch. This was one of those things that I thought, if I'm already gonna be buying these anyway, I might as well buy the ones that have the little hammer surface on there in case I need to use it like this. But if you never tried these, if you are pulling nails or cutting off nails and doing different things like that, these are wonderful for that. Now next is just a pair of adjustable pliers. These are the Knipex Cobras. And once again, that smooth adjustment. These are excellent pliers and a great little thing to have. I've recently taken the undertaking of trying to find which ratcheting screwdriver I like best. Um, I actually purchased this one. It is the Linus Tech Tips ratcheting screwdriver. You may have seen it on Project Farm. But this is something that the, chan the YouTube channel Linus Tech Tips actually engineered. They, they took things from the Mega Pro screwdriver and just different things that they had seen and they engineered a very specific screwdriver that was designed more for the tech work that they do. Um, but what they actually ended up making was just a really nice screwdriver. The one of the downsides to this, it does use proprietary kind of little stubby bits. And so to fit the full amount of bit storage in there, you do have to buy their bits. If you use kind of more standard quarter inch hex bits, you are only gonna fit half the amount of screwdrivers in there. Um, the end does have a pretty strong magnet. And so I find that that is really handy when using a screwdriver and putting it into spaces where the screw might fall off. This gives you a little bit of extra security. All right, for right now, I didn't want to have a huge hammer in the bag. Um, so I've been using this Vaughn double-sided mallet. It just has a rubber head and a plastic head on it. When I need a little bit of a hammer and especially something non-marring, this has done the trick. I'm still searching for the right hammer to put in this. Um, I don't wanna have something too big and bulky, something that sticks up way too far. That's why I've sided with this Vaughn. Um, I do just have a bit storage. I'm looking to kind of customize this with these DeWalt ones. With these DeWalt sets, you can kind of customize what you have in there. You can even pull these little items out and uh, put more or less in there if you want. I want to do something that has a combination of drill bits and then also uh, just driver bits so that I can use that and have a variety of different things. Uh, some ear protection. These are just some Isotune earbuds and then just some eye protection as well. And then down here on this other end, I do just have the little Milwaukee trim square just something to be able to get a straight edge or do some minor markings on it. Just wanted to be able to have something there. Depending on the day, I have either a drill or an impact driver in here right now because of what I was doing the other night. I have the surge in here. The 12 volt tools I have found are for the most part what I'm putting in this. All right, and then at the very end, I've just got a clamp or having a clamp is nice for when you don't have an extra hand and you just need to try and get something to stay in place. And then I just currently have this 12 inch Stabilo level in here. Thought about doing a little torpedo level instead, but ultimately I just went with this one. And then last but not least, I have the Stud Buddy. This is my absolute favorite style of stud finder. Uh, I just feel like it's the, the least technical, but at the same time, the best. And so being so small, it fits in the bag nicely and doesn't weigh a whole lot. 
All right, so now let's do a couple of things that I don't like about the Tough Built Tool Tote. First off, it is a bit on the heavy side, and I really wish that they would have had the slightly smaller version on sale at Lowe's as well, because that's the one I truly would have ended up with and would have just put less in there. You're not gonna be holding this while you're working, so I guess it's not the end of the world that it's a little bit heavy, but if you're someone who's going to be carting this thing around a lot, it is the weight is something that I would consider. Now, in terms of build quality and durability, it seems nice so far. There's lots of different little hooks and latches on it, and they all seem to be of good quality. And so far, it's doing the job really well. Now, let's talk about some of the other little bags. This is actually the electrician's pouch. Um, I'm by no means an electrician, but I actually chose this one because it did have more pockets and dividers. The clip system is pretty nice. I think being able to move the bags from someplace in your shop or your work truck or something like this to your tool tote and then strapping them right on to your tool belt when you actually get to the place where you're working, that is something that's pretty nice. Now, something else that this has that I haven't seen on too many others is the kickstand. It is a little kickstand that allows you to prop it up and stand it up where you're working and it will now actually stand up on its own and be supported and have everything you need. And when you're done, that just tucks back in and you barely notice it's there. So when it comes down to it, I'm very happy with the purchase of going with the Tough Built Tool Tote. I do think that there are things that it could be improved about it. I think it could be made lighter, but overall it's doing exactly what I need. And especially for myself, who's not a professional in this line of work, it is nice to have something that's a little bit lower cost that achieves most of what I'm looking for without breaking the bank. Now comes the part where I need help from you. What I wanna know is what you would include in a bag like this to do just kind of general work. What are some of the tools you would include in this that I may have forgotten? Or what are some of the things you'd like to see in a bag like this for yourself? And then of the tools that you have seen, what are some of the examples of those tools that you like the best and what do you like that you would put in here? So go ahead and leave those in the comments down below or go ahead and reach out to me on social media if you have specific examples for that. So I know this was a little bit of a different video. Go ahead and let me know what you thought about it. And if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when I upload new content. Go ahead and leave your comments and opinions down below. And until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.